Okay, uh, good morning, everybody. Um, uh, firstly, I'd like to thank uh, Chris and Trump and uh, Moby family uh, to invite me again. I uh, have spoken uh, um, at another colloquium in uh, uh, Shanghai and New Delhi, and uh, this is my first time to uh, speak in the States. As Chris mentioned, I am uh, an advisor uh, to Moby uh, since six months ago. Uh, I recently joined Itochu, uh, it's a Japanese trading company, but until then I had been uh, in the financial market. And uh, at this time I put the logo of LSE, uh, where I graduated from. And uh, you know, that, that's a school where uh, Ronald Coase studied and taught. And so that you know, I have um, been discussing about blockchain uh, with Chris as economists, so I am one of a few advisors um, to discuss uh, what's going on in blockchain and also uh, Moby's activities uh, as a social scientist. So, because um, I'm Japanese, I'm not really good at speaking English so fast, so I give you a conclusion first. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> so that uh, it's better for you to understand. So uh, I here uh, I have three points to uh, tell you about. The first three, uh, the world vehicle production has started shrinking uh, since uh, auto industry has been facing so-called diseconomies of scale, i.e. the more you make, the less profitable you are. I'm going to tell you more about that in details later. The next point is blockchain is becoming a solution to incentivize economic activities where uh, which uh, increase the utilization rate or uh, miles driven of electric vehicles and autonomous vehicles in the ecosystem where trustful data is a key resource. Uh, the, the third point or last point I'm going to talk about is about Asia. Uh, I think uh, it's my role uh, to tell you about what's happening in Asia centered around China and Japan. Uh, there has been a, a, a big development uh, in blockchain in the last uh, couple of weeks and months. So uh, basically in China, uh, blockchain will be the core of innovations and the technical base on building smart cities. And also in Japan, uh, we're going to have a big change uh, in the society. Uh, Japan will soon legalize uh, security token offering, or STO. Uh, and the tokenization will play a key role to visualize social capitals that the back digital trade coins, DTC, and rejuvenate local economies with the use of DTC. So I'm going to start with uh, the basics of uh, 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 blockchain, but uh, this is what uh, Mr. Tapscope has just uh, talked about, so I'm going to just uh, kind of skip these uh, slides. But uh, the first three, since uh, my title has uh, the word Web 3.0, uh, which you, most of you know about that, but in Japan, this word is something really new. So uh, since we have many Japanese audiences today, so I'm going to uh, tell you a little bit about this one. I'm sorry. Um, Web 3.0 is uh, the world uh, where the augmented reality, artificial intelligence, and blockchain and the distributed ledger technologies as a new user interface, the new computing ecosystem, and the new way to save data and the data governance. You know that. And then, next slide, this is what uh, Tapsco, uh, Mr. Tapsco talked about. So we are talking about a blockchain society as a network of values in trustful data. So what is important here is that the amount of data gathered is less important these days, but the trustfulness in data does matter. So you know this. So next slide, I'm going to talk about global auto industry, the, what's the current situation. Uh, sorry, I'm, I, like, I like data, so I put this data for you. So uh, world vehicle production has been shrinking. You know that the, uh, last year, the year 2018, uh, the, the, the volume of uh, vehicles produced in the world had started shrinking. And then it's quite likely that this year we're going to see another drop in production. The so far, especially in China, we are seeing that about more than 10% uh, of a drop in production so far until uh, the September. And also in the US and also EU, 
uh, we are seeing the drop in production. Why we are seeing that, I mean, uh, why we, we should talk about this is that, you know, uh, most of the management of auto companies uh, in the last 10 years uh, has assumed that world vehicle production would uh, grow uh, by the rate of about 2 to 3% per year. But it's not working anymore. That's why we're going to see the disruption in the industry. Now, why is that? Uh, because uh, OEMs are now uh, has uh, started facing a so-called diseconomies of scale. And this is a, a, some discourse in uh, economics, and uh, uh, this is where I'm going to talk about transaction costs as well, uh, what the Ronald course talked about. So uh, it's, it's a little bit messy diagram, but uh, uh, imagine you are uh, the president of a, a car company, and uh, this is your company. You have a uh, the number of uh, uh, vehicles produced as x-axis, and you have the price, cost, profit per vehicle produced in y-axis. You, you, you have the price or value of vehicles, uh, which is declining uh, as you produce more cars, which means that you know, the vehicles are more and more commoditized. Right? This is very easy to understand. The, the, the curve represents the cost per vehicle. It's very easy to think that you know, the more you produce, you're going to dilute the fixed costs so that you're going to have a better margins, profitability, once you produce more. That, that's where you call it uh, economies of scale. But, uh, but above the certain point of production, uh, you're going to face so-called diseconomies of scale, which means that the more you produce, the less profitable you are. Why, why it happens is that you're going to face the increase in so-called uh, transaction costs. Uh, in the context of auto industry, uh, basically you have three kinds of transaction costs uh, which, which increase by the increase in production. The first three, it's a, it's a cost to improve the product quality, such as uh, the, the cost related to records. The next cost is uh, research and development costs, mainly overhead costs. Uh, to compete with others, uh, to hire uh, good engineers uh, uh, and researchers in other industries, not in auto. So, 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 so the cost per employees has been increasing, especially in uh, research and development. The third cost is uh, sales incentives to dealers. Uh, this cost is uh, increasing in US and also in China, especially so that we're going to see the increase in transaction costs which have uh, been pressuring the profitability of auto companies. And uh, we are a country uh, at the point where uh, the, the more production is going to uh, lead to uh, the less profitability. And even the, uh, some companies are facing that the more they produce, they're making more loss. So I think that there are like four kinds of options to escape from this difficulty. The first one is uh, it's very easy. Uh, the more you produce, the less profitable you are. So which means that the less you're going to produce, the more profitable you are. So you basically slash production uh, and or even uh, you slash capacity to manufacture vehicles, especially with ICE, uh, internal combustion engines. So this is what's happening right now. Like even in the States, like GM is trying to uh, slash the capacity here. So you, you, you have many strikes right now here, right? Uh, they have stopped producing cars in India. And I think they're about to uh, do the same in South Korea as well. So they don't really want to make more cars. Uh, in Japan, Honda has decided to uh, stop producing cars in UK and also Turkey. And uh, Nissan, which just announced uh, uh, first half earnings uh, last night in, in Tokyo, uh, in Japan. And uh, they're going to slash 10% of the total capacity in the world as well. So basically, they don't want to make more cars. And uh, another option would be uh, to, to, uh, would be to increase uh, the price or value of vehicles uh, upwards uh, by uh, adding values uh, with uh, such as applying uh, augmented reality and virtual realities or digital twin uh, in, in car configuration. 
And also, uh, another option would be to uh, introduce a blockchain to increase uh, traceability of materials and enhance ethical consumptions. The example of, of the former would be a British company called ZeroLite, uh, which has introduced uh, software uh, for Audi uh, um, to, 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 bring a, to bring a new customer experience at dealers. Uh, Audi City, uh, which is a digitalized dealer, uh, supported by the software of this company, uh, has succeeded to increase the, 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 the revenues of uh, the dealership uh, worldwide. Um, the Audi City uh, in London, uh, Mayfair, has experienced the increase in uh, revenues uh, to increase 30%. Uh, only for a year since they have introduced this software. So it's, it's, it's this digital twin uh, uh, technology uh, which was uh, used at dealers is backboned by blockchain. And uh, now I have to PR Itochu this time. So uh, Itochu uh, has recently uh, started a, a POC uh, of natural rubber uh, procurement uh, for tire makers in Indonesia. And uh, the, the purpose is to transfer the value added on products or tires back to uh, producers of materials or natural rubber. So uh, GPSNR is a, is a global consortium uh, which stands for Global Platform for Sustainable Natural Rubber, uh, which have members such as uh, Bridgestone, Toyota, uh, Michelin, uh, Continental, and such. Uh, Itochu is one of the, uh, the only uh, trading companies uh, from Japan. Uh, they are seeking uh, the solution uh, to, uh, uh, to create uh, the, 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 the procurement of materials uh, based on fair trade. So that, you know, uh, business-wise, uh, business, in, in terms of business people, uh, we're going to set a, a higher price of the products with the materials which has been uh, procured in a better way. Uh, based on fair trade, so that we can transfer the profit back to farmers or of uh, natural resources. This kind of movement is happening not uh, in terms of tires, but also in other auto parts, including batteries. Like I think uh, uh, Volkswagen and BMW has recently uh, started uh, this kind of consortium, and uh, especially in Europe, uh, there is some kind of movement uh, to do the same kind of things. And another option uh, to, uh, to escape from difficulty of these economies of scale is to slash transaction costs with such as uh, uh, DDM or 3D printer. And then here is a good example of an uh, American startup called HackRot, uh, which was just founded uh, in Ventura, California, uh, two years ago. Uh, th this company was founded by a Hollywood film director and actor. Actually, uh, they just started making car and auto parts uh, based on the designing the cars uh, in augmented realities, uh, which means that you can design the car simultaneously by the engineers in West Coast and East Coast. Right? They can make or design the cars in a cyber uh, world and then uh, create this car uh, with this 3D printing, uh, which is shown on the right-hand side. So uh, this technology is backed by blockchain as well. And then this uh, uh, drops uh, the transaction costs uh, quite dramatically. And uh, the last, last case uh, to escape from uh, this uh, difficulty is just to say goodbye to the game or you just do a kind of blue ocean to uh, create a new ecosystem uh, of uh, mobility uh, with the case and the mass. So this is very familiar words for you now. So, you know, um, that, that's the ecosystem uh, centered around the battery EVs, at the, which has been uh, electrified from uh, the vehicles with ice. And uh, these battery EVs are being more and more shared and becoming more and more autonomous. Eventually, these cars are going to be autonomous vehicles or robot taxis or uh, autonomous shuttles in the city uh, where uh, you can create uh, the new businesses uh, which is phrased as uh, mobility as a services or mass. 
the point is that uh, blockchain uh, can be used uh, in the in the in the in the way of tokenization uh, to increase the miles driven uh, of uh, these vehicles, uh, such as uh, electric vehicles and autonomous vehicles, and activate uh, uh, these mass businesses. So the, the, the KPI of the industry uh, has been shifting uh, from uh, cars sold uh, to uh, miles driven. So uh, each time I talked with Chris, uh, the blockchain. Uh, what, what they're going to bring uh, to auto industry is very simple. It's a key solution to increase the utilization rate of the vehicles. You know that like, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the vehicles are only, uh, uh, operated only uh, 5% of the total life, uh, so that you just increase uh, the mileage or utilization rate of the vehicles, and hence uh, you're going to have more opportunities uh, to, uh, to do businesses. So uh, that's the kind of economics talks, yeah. And uh, I'm going to talk about China. Uh, as Chris mentioned, uh, in the last <coughs> couple of weeks and or months, uh, there has been many news from China. And China officially jumped into blockchain with both feet. And it was uh, 25th of October uh, in China, China time, uh, Xi Jinping, the Chinese president, officially announced uh, and say that uh, we must take the blockchain as an important breakthrough for independent innovation of core technologies. So uh, it was for the first time we have heard from uh, Xi Jinping about the uh, uh, application of blockchain in China. And the next day uh, of the statement, uh, which was on 26 October, China just passed a cryptography law uh, that will be effective on January 1st uh, uh, next year. So the implementation uh, implication is very simple. Uh, we're going to see uh, digital renminbi to be released quite soon. And even last week or the week before, uh, China has also published an independently developed ID system for cities as part of the smart city infrastructure based on blockchain technology. So we, 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 uh, hence we found that uh, China would uh, see blockchain as a key technology uh, in smart cities, which is very important that we should be care about. So it's not just about uh, digital currencies, but they're going to apply blockchain to uh, smart cities, which is a kind of buzzword everywhere in the world right now. This could be a, a little bit sensitive statement, but you know, uh, what if North Korea is going to introduce the same, right? Which is actually you know, uh, one of the uh, interesting topics that we should talk about. You know, like North Korea is now uh, recently introduced many like, blockchain engineers uh, in the Gaza and uh, organized this kind of con uh, uh, this conference in Pyongyang. So that you know, uh, what if uh, South Korea and North Korea are going to unify? So you know, uh, blockchain could be a key solution for the country to uh, develop. Yeah. I should stop that. It's, it's quite a sensitive statement anyway. But uh, that's one of the key issues that we should talk about in Asia. Yeah. So you know that China you know, is, uh, always triggers the disruption. Yeah. Uh, here, here is some like, a diagram you know maybe. Like it's uh, it's, uh, it's uh, that the Kubla lost acceptance of this process. Uh, what it means is that, you know, uh, that the mindset you have when you are told by your doctor that you're going to die because of cancer in the next, next couple of weeks, you would have that kind of uh, 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 emotions. Yeah. But this is uh, quite similar to what uh, uh, policymakers and the management uh, think once you're facing uh, the new technologies or disruptive event like China has been doing, right? So uh, applying that to blockchain, like in the last, I'd say, like 10 years, um, you know, it, it's been hype, yeah, uh, because of Bitcoins, yeah. And uh, each time I talk to uh, 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 Japanese management uh, to invite uh, uh, to join Mobi, you know, any management uh, come to me, oh, okay, it's a Mobi blockchain, yeah, well, it's, it's about Bitcoin, right? So 
we don't care. That kind of mindset, you know. They, 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 they firstly deny, yeah, and they get angry. But now that the many are uh, started thinking that, you know, okay, uh, we, should, we should do something uh, with the blockchain, the kind of mindset, right? And uh, this has actually happened in uh, uh, automobile industries, uh, especially uh, 10 years ago, uh, when China started to uh, electrify the auto industry. Even like Japanese companies, including Toyota, have said like oh, EVs, no, no way. I mean, it's no future, whatever. But now, look at Toyota right now. It's rushing to China now. Yeah. And uh, well, this is a little bit messy chart, but uh, in, in the context of auto industry, China has actually digitalized the auto industry since 2009, when it became number one in sales volume. And they started to electrify the market in order to uh, digitalize the market or evolve the market and uh, change the KPIs of the industry. Yeah. So uh, if uh, China would think blockchain as a key solution or key uh, tool uh, to uh, revolutionize uh, the economy, uh, we could see the same thing, I think. So uh, I'm just to put this uh, uh, historical transaction of uh, uh, China's uh, new vehicles uh, together with what they have done uh, in terms of electrification. Yeah. And blockchain is being really implemented uh, for uh, POCs in China already, especially uh, in, the, in the field of supply chain management, SCM. Uh, you know that ethical consumption is rising uh, in China, especially amongst uh, those young people, uh, such as millennials. So this is a very famous uh, 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 trial of Chinese uh, companies. Uh, it's called GoGo Chicken. It's a blockchain chicken. <laughs> and uh, actually, uh, this is working quite well, I heard. You know. uh, these days, like, these uh, young uh, generation uh, buy blockchain chickens uh, at a higher price because they trust the blockchain poultry because they know about how these chickens have been raised and also what kind of foods they have eaten. It's all blockchain. Yeah. And Walmart in China has the same uh, uh, things, uh, not only in pottery, but also uh, other foods like rice. Yeah. So uh, I think China, uh, because uh, you know, the, um, especially young people are very susceptible to any development in uh, digital something, and also uh, people uh, need more trustful data. So China could be a huge market, and uh, I think the government knows that. So, so it's not about politics, but it, it's about economies and, uh, um, and uh, um, at the new businesses. Uh, blockchain is really needed. Okay, I'm going to talk about Japan lastly. So you know that I'm from the country of Satoshi Nakamoto, so I have to talk about that. Maybe, maybe, maybe many uh, are going to uh, dispute with that, but anyway. Um, you know that Japan has, uh, is a country with very long history of, history of cryptography. Uh, especially, uh, we have the Ferica or NFC, uh, is IC card. Uh, which was uh, embedded, as far as I know, by uh, University of Tokyo, and uh, which was commercialized by Sony. Uh, this is uh, the, 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 the center one is the Sika. I have a Sika, the iSika here as well. Now we have it on iPhones or uh, uh, smartphones. And uh, basically, I can pay for anything with this right now. So when uh, the, the, uh, the, the Mobi's uh, VID uh, release uh, was on, uh, in, the, uh, in the press, and uh, Nikkei uh, chose this news as a top page. And everybody said that, oh, yeah, we're going to have a Suica cars. Yeah. And uh, people uh, f started to find that the blockchain is really uh, useful, use cases for convenience of the pain. So uh, we have long history of cryptography, especially in payments. So uh, we have the kind of basement uh, to accept uh, blockchain. And uh, this is something very separate issues. But that, um, that, that, does, does any of you uh, uh, have, have any of you visited uh, Japan in the last couple weeks or months? You know, uh, we had a World Cup rugby. 
and uh, you know, uh, which is quite successful. I'm not sure. Uh, you know, I had been educated in Britain, so I, I like rugby. But uh, um, we, we saw like uh, All Blacks, uh, Red Dragons of Wales, or uh, Springboks of South Africans bowed after the matches because they have they wanted to thank uh, Japanese people, uh, uh, Japanese hospitality. So uh, what I want to mention is that you know, Japan has very uh, strong uh, social um, uh, capitals uh, that, never, that had never been uh, expressed, measured, but appreciated. We have so many foreigners now visiting Japan. Yeah. Even though our economy uh, is facing the, the declining population, uh, so that we uh, much matured. Uh, country and market already, but uh, we still have a very strong social capital that lure uh, foreigners uh, to come to Japan, uh, not only once, but uh, many times. So um, we have such like social capitals as like hospitality or virtue or bonds or social bonds. In the blockchain uh, field, uh, that uh, Japan, as I said, Japan will legalize STO in April 2020. Um, as far as I know, uh, uh, Japan would be one of the first developed countries uh, that will uh, legalize STO. And uh, this is going to be um, a very challenging experiment, but uh, many uh, are thinking about STO uh, to visualize or securitize and other values to such social capitals that I have mentioned. So we're going to have STO as a vehicle to, to raise funds from investors, and we're going to have uh, the, um, uh, community coins or digital trade coins, uh, which are going to be backed by social, those uh, social capitals. Uh, which we could talk about or discuss about this later, but uh, I, want you, I want to tell you that in terms of fintech, uh, Japan is going to lead uh, in this STO uh, fundraising and also uh, digital trade coins. Uh, not as big as uh, Facebook Libra, but it's more uh, tied to uh, local uh, economies or local communities, uh, which lure uh, many foreigners now coming uh, and visiting. So this is my last slide. Uh, recently, uh, there's no translation uh, to English, but we, we, are, we are discussing about those population of connectedness. Uh, it's very difficult to translate, but uh, these population include the permanent residents living in the local communities and also those foreigners coming to the areas because they are interested in getting there. So uh, we started talking about how to uh, create a new economy or new businesses uh, for this population of connectedness. Uh, the red figure here represents uh, the number of foreigners uh, visiting Japan. Uh, Japan's population is currently at about 127 million, whereas uh, we have more than 30 million foreigners coming uh, in a year. And uh, the government is going to uh, increase that figure to 40 to 60 in the next 10 to 20 years. So that uh, in terms of building businesses, uh, in terms of mass or mobility of the services, uh, we should think about uh, how to uh, uh, include these uh, uh, population of connectedness uh, and uh, make them uh, spend. Uh, in local economies where they cannot make new businesses uh, or uh, they don't have many young people, but still they have very strong social capitals that people really appreciate. So, um, so the, the last notion that I'm going to tell you is that you know, um, uh, Asia is uh, really the key uh, area and also the market for blockchain, the one thing. Uh, look at Japan's case, uh, even though we're facing the, the declining population, uh, but uh, you know, uh, we can now uh, visualize social capitals. It's not just about Japan, but also any countries or any communities that attract foreigners have opportunity to introduce blockchain and DLT. Even like small countries in the world, or even small communities, you know, thanks to uh, the interaction of uh, digital trade coins 
and the vehicles of STOs, you know, we could create new businesses as well. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, that's all my presentation. Yeah. <laughs>